is. Can you guess where I am today? It's a famous landmark. It's known throughout the world, right here close to home in Northern California. I'm at the Golden Gate Bridge, which links the city of San Francisco to its northern neighbor, Marin County. As you can see, the bridge is painted a reddish orange color known as International Orange. This bright color helps the bridge to be seen through the fog that often forms here. But the name of the bridge has nothing to do with its color. It comes from the name of the narrow strait of water that it spans. That's known as the Golden Gate. And it runs between San Francisco and the Pacific Ocean. Construction of the bridge began in 1933 and lasted four years. It was not an easy task. For a start, the span of the bridge, the part between the two towers, measures 4,200 feet. That's almost a mile long. This was more than twice as long as the span of any other bridge that had been built in the world at that time. Another difficulty? Workers had to blast away rock under deep water surrounded by strong currents to be able to plant the foundations for the two tall earthquake-proof towers that rise out of the water. Each finished tower is 746 feet tall. That's like 25 houses stacked up on top of each other. The Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge. In this type of bridge, the roadway is suspended or hung from thick steel cables. The main cables are a yard thick. These cables hang from the tops of the two towers, kind of draped over the tops, curving down with smaller cables hanging straight down from them. Those are the ones that hold up the roadway. A crew of 1,000 workers was involved in constructing the bridge. Some had to balance on those main cables high up above the water. Sadly, during construction, 11 workers fell from the bridge and died. However, a safety net, a relatively new invention at the time, saved another 19. The bridge was completed in 1937, the longest bridge in the world at that time. A golden rivet was driven into one of the steel beams in the middle of the span, but it's been taken out now, so don't bother trying to find it. In all, the bridge contains enough cable to go around the earth three times. It's said to be the most photographed bridge in the world. You can drive, bike, or walk across the bridge. So come on, let's go. Time for our story, Pops Bridge, by Eve Bunting, illustrated by C.F. Payne. My pop is building the Golden Gate Bridge. Almost every day after school, Charlie, Shue and I go to Fort Point and watch. The bridge will stretch across the bay from San Francisco to Marin. People said this bridge couldn't be built. Some call it the Impossible Bridge. They say the bay is too deep, the current's too strong, the wind's blowing in from the ocean too fierce. But I know my pop can do it. Whenever I say he's building the bridge, Mum laughs. There's a crew of more than a thousand men working on the bridge, Robert, including Charlie's dad, she reminds me. I know that, but I just shrug. To me, it's Pop's bridge. 
Pops a high iron man, balancing on the slatted catwalk, spinning and bending the cables. He climbs so high that sometimes clouds come down around his shoulders. When the fog rolls in, he disappears completely. That's why the high iron men are called skywalkers. Charlie's dad is a painter. The painters start work long before the bridge is even finished. My pop says if it weren't for them, the bridge would rust away. But I think he's just saying that to be nice. The Skywalkers have the most important job of all. At Fort Point, I look for Pop through the binoculars Mum lends me. The workers look alike in their overalls and swabby hats, but I can always find my Pop because of the red kerchief he ties at his throat. It's our own scarlet signal. I don't worry much about him on days when the sun sparkles on the water, when sailboats skim below. It's so beautiful. I can forget that it's dangerous too. But when the wind blows through the Golden Gate, the men cling to the girders like caterpillars on a branch. On foggy days, my hands sweat on the binoculars. Where is he? When I find him, I try not to look away, as though the force of my eyes can keep him from falling. At my house, Charlie and I work on a jigsaw puzzle Mum bought us. When it's done, it will show how an artist thinks the bridge will look. Charlie and I work on the puzzle most every day. Bending over it, I feel like I'm building the real thing along with Pop. I'm a Skywalker too. We're almost done, Charlie says. I wonder which of us will put in the last piece. I shrug, but what he says makes me think. My Pop built that bridge. He should set the last puzzle piece in place. That's only fair, even though Charlie might think his dad should do it. When Charlie isn't looking, I slip one of the pieces into my pocket. Later, I hide it in my room. I'm saving it for Pop. The impossible bridge is nearly finished. One evening, Mom and Pop and I walk down to Fort Point. The bridge hangs between stars and sea. It's like a giant harp, my pop says, a harp for the angels to play. I look up at him and I can tell this wasn't just a job to my pop. He loves this bridge. In San Francisco, there is great excitement. Everyone is waiting for opening day. Charlie and I have watched nearly every bit of the bridge go up. We saw the two spans come together from opposite directions. We saw them meet. We saw the roadway go in. And my pop did it. No one can be as proud as I am. Not even Charlie. After all, my dad is a Skywalker. And then one day, something terrible happens. Charlie and I are watching as the scaffolding pulls away from the bridge. There's a noise like a train wreck as the scaffolding crashes down into the safety net. The net tears loose and men go with it into the swirling tide. I can't breathe, I can't think, but then I look hard through the binoculars and see Pop still on the bridge, his red kerchief whipping. Pop, I whisper in relief. Beside me, Charlie is screaming, where's my dad? Where's my dad? We had seen him working close to that scaffolding. I can't see him now. We'll find him, I promise. We have to. I sweep the binoculars up and down the bridge cables, looking at every painter hanging high on his Jacob's ladder or swinging in a bosun's chair like a knot on a rope. Be there, Mr. Shoe, I plead, and then I spot him. Over by that cross girder, I yell. Charlie fumbles for the binoculars. I help him. He looks where I point. He's there. He's safe, Charlie gasps. The next day we find out that only two of the twelve men in the water were saved. I think and think about that day. At night, half asleep, I see the bridge shake. I hear the crash. One of those men in the water could have been Pop or Charlie's dad. I finally understand and I feel ashamed. Equal work, equal danger for skywalkers and for painters. The work goes on. A new safety net is put in place. Pop says there's less talking and joking now among the men. There's a remembering, but the bridge must be finished. 
and at last it is. We watch through Mum's binoculars as the golden spike is drilled in at the centre of the main span. Now the celebration can begin. On opening day, no cars are allowed. Thousands of people walk and dance and roller skate across the bridge, including us. I wear Pops kerchief around my neck. There's a man riding a unicycle. There's another on stilts. Navy biplanes fly above the great steel towers. Battleships and cruisers sail below the bridge and into San Francisco Bay. Wind strums its music through the stretch of the cables. And I think of my Pops harp. That night, our family has our own party with Charlie and his dad. There's stewed chicken and a Chinese noodle dish Charlie's dad made and a snickerdoodle pie. The jigsaw puzzle sits on the coffee table with a gap in the middle. I've searched and searched for that missing piece, my mother says. Hmm, a good thing we didn't leave our bridge with a space like that, Mr. Shu says. Pop chuckles. We'd be working still. It's time. I slip upstairs to get the hidden puzzle piece, then find the scissors and cut the piece carefully in half. I go back down and put a half piece in Mr. Shoe's hand and the other in my pops. Finish it, I say. It's your bridge. It belongs to both of you. My mother raises her eyebrows and Charlie says, Hey, where? But I just watch as the two pieces fit in so perfectly, so smoothly. Team effort, my pop says. We raise our glasses of sarsaparilla to celebrate the labourers and riveters, the carpenters and the painters and the skywalkers, all the men who work together to build the most beautiful bridge in the world. Pop's Bridge, written by Eve Bunting, illustrated by C.F. Payne, published by Harcourt Inc. This Bridge Will Not Be Grey, story by Dave Eggers, art by Tucker Nichols, published by McSweeney.